This video is a physics problem example concerning a clock. There the timekeeping is accomplished through the use of a pendulum and the oscillation period of the pendulum. So this simple pendulum clock is uh, good. It works well, keeps regular time when the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. The pendulum is constructed with a solid thin iron rod. We're going to ignore its mass. We're going to take this as a simple pendulum problem with uh, all the significant mass at the end of the pendulum. Uh, there's a 0.6 kilogram iron mass at the end of the rod, and the center of mass of the iron is 24.824 centimeters from the axis of rotation. The internal workings of the clock, the gear mechanisms, accomplish the regular tick-tock, tick-tock, um, you know, once a second uh, type event. Um, so this particular clock is in a house, and uh, we're going to propose here that the environmental controls, the air conditioning system in the summer fails, and we're going to assume that the temperature of the clock becomes 33 degrees Celsius. That's in the 90s, if I remember right. Um, and the hypothetical problem, we're going to have this temperature exist for 24 hours and ask what is the error now in the clock. Uh, so will, and will the clock run fast or will it run slow? Uh, we're only going to keep track of uh, temperature changes affecting the length of the pendulum. I'm going to ignore any effect on the gears. I don't know how I would calculate that. So we're only, we're attributing all this temperature change to the physical effect of expansion as the temperature increases. Uh, the length of the pendulum becomes greater. So then we're going to repeat this, and we're going to do uh, the case where the original length of the pendulum is 6.206 centimeters. And uh, you know, it's not a completely random number. I've divided by 4. Uh, hopefully I divided correctly. I divided the original length by 4. And then we're going to draw some conclusions, and I'll have a general uh, derivation here. Um, so let's uh, get started with this. So the period of a pendulum is t, t. That's calculated with 2 pi times the square root of the length divided by the acceleration due to gravity. The length changes with temperature. Uh, it's the original length, L naught, plus a coefficient alpha based on the material, an expansion coefficient, times the original length, L naught, times the change in temperature in Celsius. And for iron, you can look up in a table, the value of alpha is 12 times 10 to the minus 6 with units of 1 over degrees Celsius. So on the left, I have my pendulum, length L, it's swinging back and forth. Uh, we're going to you know, round off G just a little bit here, 9.8 meters per second squared. So what's the happening here? Well, at the temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, I can calculate the, uh, the period for this pendulum. So I put in in meters, 0.24824 meters divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. I must have a match in the units if I'm using uh, 980 for the acceleration of gravity, due to gravity, then I would use the 24.824 centimeters. But you must match the length units on the uh, L and G factors here. And you know, I chose this length to be pretty close to one second. It's not one second. It's uh, not trivially. I don't make clocks, but uh, there is a little difference from one second, but the gearing will take care of that, uh, that problem. So at 33 degrees Celsius, the length is going to change. So I put in the original length. I put in this coefficient, expansion coefficient, times the original length, times the change in temperature, and that must be in degrees Celsius. It cannot be in uh, degrees Fahrenheit if you're using a table with expansion coefficients that have units of 1 over degrees Fahrenheit. I came up with a new length, just slightly longer, 0 0.248787, 0 0.248787 uh, meters. So let's write meters here. And then I calculated the new period for this pendulum, T prime. <clears throat> I used the new length, same acceleration due to gravity, and I come up with a new oscillation time. The, it takes longer for this pendulum to swing back and forth now. It takes slightly longer. What effect will that have on how the clock runs? Well, the swinging back and forth in each swing 
there's a release mechanism for a gear to allow that gear to advance and allow other gears to turn and eventually turn the, the hands of this analog clock. And because we take longer to release that gear from one time to the next, the clock will run slow. The clock will be running slow here because um, our pendulum is not swinging as fast. Well, what's the ratio of those two times? So taking the original period divided by the new period, you can pause the video and use your own calculator to uh, check this out. <coughs> That's the ratio of the, uh, the periods. If I multiply this by 24 hours, I will get how much this slower clock has advanced in time. And it is advanced 23 hours, 0.998198. We want to convert that to minutes. First, you would subtract 23 multiply the remainder by 60, and you'll get 59 point dot dot dot, uh, subtract 59, multiply that by 60, and you'll come up with this hours, minutes, and seconds. And the clock is slow by 7 seconds. Not, not a major issue. Um, okay, that's fine. What about the case where the pendulum is shorter? And I'm not going to show the detailed calculations here, but uh, suppose we start with 6.206 centimeters. When we go up to the higher temperature, uh, instead of 0.06206 uh, meters, we come up with 0.06206.97 meters. And the original uh, time for the shorter pendulum is different. It's not one second, but 0.5 seconds roughly. You shouldn't be surprised at that. The length changes by a factor of 4. We're going to take the square root of the length here. So the times are related by a factor of 2. A square root of 4 is a factor of 2. Um, but for the original length, do the calculation for the longer pendulum due to the higher temperature. Take a ratio of those times. And what we come up with is that the ratio is the same as before. Uh, the ratio of time is 0 0.999-22009, same as before. That's the reason I kept all these digits, to show that it's the same. The length of the pendulum doesn't matter as far as calculating how much delay there will be in the system. And I can show that a little better if I uh, deliver this page. So let's let uh, the original length be unknown. The original length is unknown. Then we have the expressions for t and t prime. Um, L naught here is our unknown length. If I divide those, what you see happening here is the square root of L naught over g divided by L naught plus alpha L naught delta t over g. There's an L naught in each term that's here. So those L naughts are going to cancel eventually after I first cancel the g. It's a little clearer to see the L naughts when we get rid of the G factor. Um, but over here we have L naught divided by L naught plus alpha L naught delta T. You can see the L naughts go away. So the amount of uh, change in the period, this ratio number, uh, does not depend on the original length. This will work for any length. And if I put in the alpha number here, 12 times 10 to the minus 6, and the delta T of 13 degrees Celsius, I do this calculation, you should repeat it yourself, but you come up with the same ratio number that we had earlier. So that's what happens when we uh, let the uh, pendulum of a clock uh, get longer because the temperature changes. The clock runs slow, not a big deal for one day, but if this was uh, continuing for a long time, if you took a pendulum from a cold region of the Earth down to the equatorial region of the Earth, um, after a few weeks, you would notice this uh, difficulty of the clock being in error. <clears throat> if you like these videos, uh, you can look up for more of them, physics and astronomy, at these two websites. You'll see a list of videos, and uh, they're a direct link to the YouTube uh, site, so easy access. There's free, no registration. And if you like the YouTube videos, please uh, subscribe to my channel.